So, yes, we are simply going to quickly uh, have a recap, which is on our factorization. Remember, it is important that you do understand your factorization. As we had the basics from your grade 11 mathematics, actually, we can uh, just say from our grade 10. So we have got uh, simpler quadratic expressions because that is where we're going to have our uh, factorization. We have got simpler quadratic expressions, guys, of this nature. We're not going to waste our time because we are used to this one. You can just also have maybe 10 minutes to have a recap on your uh, grade 10. It can help. Where the coefficient of x squared is 1 on a quadratic expression. We can simply uh, consider having two brackets of this nature. Since here we've got one on the coefficient of x squared, we are going to have x and x in this bracket so that x times x will give us this x squared. So this must be one and this must be one, okay? Then we consider the constant uh, in this case, which is uh, six, all right? Let's have our constant here, which is six. We have to consider the product or the factors of six, these factors must add up to this five. So we need products or factors of this six, this six that we are seeing. We need its products, all right? Uh, that is the products or the factors, all right? Or we can simply have this as the factors, but they must add up to five. So there are so many factors of six, guys. We have got six itself and a one, all right? We've got a negative 6 and a negative 1. We've got a 3 and a 2, a negative 3 and a negative 2. All these terms, when multiplied, they will give you a 6. But guys, we cannot just consider all of the terms. We can simply see that a possibility of a 5 is when we've got 3 and 2. And that is a positive that we are seeing here. So meaning say we must have positive 3, positive 2. Multiply these two numbers. You, you have a 6. Add these two numbers. Do we have what? A five. So these are the two numbers, three and what? Three and two. So you're going to have them as a positive. Positive three, positive two. You're done. So it was just a simpler uh, factorization that we're doing. All right. Let's, let us just consider to say it was a negative here. Let's say it was a negative five. You cannot use three and two. All right. You cannot use this time uh, three and two because of the negative that we are seeing, negative 5. So instead, the factors that we are going to use this time must be negative 3 and negative 2. You multiply these two, you are going to obtain positive 6. You add these two, you are going to have negative 5. So meaning to say we need negative 3 and negative 2 when it is like that, all right? So that is the condition. So in this case, it was going to be negative 3, negative 2, if there is a negative here. So you have to be careful when answering these questions. So these are one, the ones that you use when now solving equations, this and that. So, But my major focus is when this coefficient of x squared is not 1, like what we are seeing in these uh, expressions that I'm having. So the first one, we are given 12x squared plus 17x plus 6. So I'm going to use uh, the method that I've explained uh, to the grade 12s and uh, to the grade 11s and uh, 10s, where you can consider it as the cheat method. Actually, there are so many ways of uh, factorizing. So you can use the way that you have been taught before. Uh, like I said, there are so many ways or methods of uh, doing this factorization. So using the cheat method, what I can simply do is that since here I'm uh, not having one, remember I'm used when it is like x squared, when I'm having one here, x squared. So for me to have x squared, I'm going to get rid of this 12, all right? So how do I get rid of this 12, all right? So these are just follow-up steps, the guys, that you can simply use if you find uh, this method useful, all right? So this is how I remove this 12. I'm going to multiply it to this number, the last term, which is our constant. So I multiply these two. 
all right? For me to remove this 12, I have to multiply it on this number. So that's six times 12, the product of uh, these two numbers, which is what? 72, uh, six times 12, that's uh, 72. So meaning to say, I no longer have this 12. I'm now having it as x squared plus 17x plus, remember it's a positive here, all right? So we multiply it and go to what? 72, remember? We, have, we multiply this, it's a 72. We are now having the coefficient of x squared as one, which is the most important part that we need here because we know that if the coefficient of x squared is one like this, we can easily factorize. You can easily factorize. Both you have to put x and another x here. x times x, it's x squared. We are used to that. That is the part that I just explained now. Then from this part, I said you are going to consider what? The constant, which is 72. You need the products or the factors of 72, which will add up to this number, which is 17. What are the products? Two numbers. You multiply two numbers, you get 72. But when you add, you are going to have 17. So this one is a trial and error, all right? You have to try as many terms if it is not direct, all right? So it's a trial and error. You try this one, you obtain 72, you add, you see, are you going to obtain uh, 17? So in this case, uh, on the 72, we were going to have uh, these two numbers on the 72. Let's try uh, to work out 12. All right, uh, all right, let's try 9 and 8. 9 times 8, that's 72. 9 times 8, that's 72. If we add 9 plus 8, that's 17. Right, that's this 17 that we are seeing. So these are the numbers that we need. Nine and what? Eight, and they are positive. So I'm going to write these numbers, plus nine, plus eight. Remember, we had to remove this 12. That is the cheat part that we had. So we had to remove it, multiply here. It was not included on the x squared. So what are we going to do? Using this cheat method, we are going to bring it back, the 12. We bring it back. But remember, it was affecting x squared. But here, it's no longer x squared. It's x, and this one is x. So for it to affect x squared, you affect on x. You also affect on x here. So you bring the 12 down. So you're going to have the 12 here and the 12 here. This is how you apply this method. Then you check the brackets. If there is anything common, if there is anything common, factorize. If there is anything common, factorize. In the first bracket, is there anything common? All right, there's 12 and three and uh, 9. 3 is common, so you can factor out 3, meaning to say we're going to have 12 divided by 3, which is 4, so that's 4x. 9 divided by 3, that's a 3. All right, we move on to this bracket. Is there anything common between these numbers? 12 and 8, that's a 4. So you can factor out a 4. That means you're going to have uh, inside 12 divided by 4, that's 3. So you're going to be 3x. 8 divided by 4, that's a positive 2 like this. So these numbers that you factored out becomes useless. They are no longer part of our question, these ones. You get rid of these two numbers that you factored out. They are not Part of your question, right? The ones that you factor out, these ones, for you to have the simplest form, you take them, you throw them away, All right? Which is the what? The three and this four. So this is our final answer, the two brackets that we are seeing. Four X plus three and what? And three X plus two. So you can start with this one. You can end up with this one. It's up to you. That is the cheat method. So for you to have much... Uh, Explanation, uh, you can consider watching the grade 11 uh, videos. I explained uh, much on that one. Let's consider another example so that we can see if we are together so that you can use it to answer as many questions as you can because you can use it on any part of this format. So these two, we can use the cheat method. So on number two, uh, if we are to consider that was again a quadratic expression, uh, that was 5x squared minus 23x minus 10. All right, so let's see what we're we going to have at the end. So like I said, 
using the cheat method, we have to get rid of the constant affecting x squared, which is the five that we are seeing there. Get rid of that five. So how can we get rid of the five? That is the question. It multiplies other term, other number, which is the constant. So the five multiplies the constant. You throw it there to multiply the constant. So it's going to be times five. That means it's no longer there. So it will be x squared minus 23x. It's now minus 50. So now you consider the constant because you are used to this type of factorization when this is one. You simply have what? Two brackets. You put x here. You put x here. Then you consider what? The constant, which is minus 50. We need the products. But they must add up to what? Minus 23. Do we have any two numbers? Just look for two numbers. Consider two numbers. You multiply two numbers, you get what? Minus 50. But when you add, it must be negative 23. 50, let's consider 25 and 2. These two gives us positive 50. So for us to have a negative 50, it's either there's a negative 25 or there is a negative 2. Remember, it's trial and error. But when we add, where are we going to have a negative 23? When we add these products, all right, let's add minus 25 plus 2, that's minus 23. So this is the one that we need, which gives us negative 23. If we add these two, it will give us a positive 23. All right, so we need this one and this one, which will give us a negative 23, which is what? Negative 25 and a positive 2. Remember, this is not our answer because we had to cheat from the first part here. So we have to bring that 5 that we removed in place of x so we put the 5 in place of x we put the 5 look for the bracket where there is a common term is there anything common in these brackets the first bracket we can see that 5 is common between 5 and what 25 so you can factor out the 5 all right remember whatever that you factor out becomes useless so you factor out the 5 5x and 5 that will be x Minus 25 and 5, that's a minus 5. In this bracket, is there anything common? There is nothing. So it remains as it is 5x plus 2. Whatever that you factored out becomes useless. So this will be our answer. Just like that. So this factorization can be used, you guys, in any, any quadratic of that nature. So I want you to try it. Uh, if it is easier, then use it. Or you can just continue with the method that you are familiar to. As long as that method is easier for you to apply. But I see most of you guys, you spend uh, like uh, five minutes to answer a question where factorization is needed. And there it is, maybe two marks. Guys, the number of marks is supposed to also uh, tell you the, 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 the time frame. You are trying to figure out the number. You just put two brackets. Automatically, you want to figure out which number... Most of you have confusion in the sign that I'm going to put is what? But guys, it's, it's, it's your, your method. If you are used to that, then uh, please apply that. On another question, we are given again a quadratic uh, because of the highest exponent, which is 2. But in this case, we do not have the format ax squared plus bx plus c. ax squared bx we do not have that part of bx it's just ax squared and this constant whenever it is like that or it can be just maybe ax squared and bx maybe it is like this uh 5x squared plus c maybe 45x they're just two terms in that case consider is there a highest common factor between the two terms there's nothing special there is there any highest common factor yes 5 is common between 5 and 45. So let's factor it out first. That will be 5x squared divided to 5, like this. So it will cancel. And have what? x squared. Minus 45 divided to 5, that's a negative 9. But these questions, it is not just to factorize, to say, I have a bracket, I'm done. Because you know that to factorize is to put in brackets. It must be done uh completely it's only that uh here the, the, the instruction it was just factorized but it must be done completely that is 
you have to factorize fully. Is this part fully factorized? No, there is a difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. Nine is a perfect square, remember. Nine is same as what? Three squared. So remember your basics of your difference of two squares, a squared minus b squares, uh, minus b squared gives us what? a minus b into a plus b, where a and b are the square roots of these terms that we are given. So it is going to be 5 into the square root of x, uh, x squared, which is x, the square root of 9, which is 3. So one will subtract, another one is going to add, just like that. So you're done. In this case, you, uh, you are saying you are, you, are, you, are, you are fully factorized. So let us use this, guys, to just have a recap because we are going to need this to answer question number one, paper one. That part is important. Your paper one, question number one, it's your grade 11 as it is. So make sure you go back there, recap how to solve those equations, the inequalities, everything. So we shall have just the basics uh, for you to understand, but find also some time to go through those uh, areas before you uh, move on, just for you to be able to attempt question number one.